Okay. Um, is it always necessary to determine a flow curve, also sometimes known as multi-point measurement, or is it just sufficient to determine a single point viscosity, uh, which means that we determine the viscosity at one shear rate only, one constant shear rate. So um, for these questions, we have to think about the what is the type of sample or the material or the liquid that we are measuring, whether it's a Newtonian or a non-Newtonian. So let me uh, explain. When we, we have many different ways of measuring viscosity, we can use like, you know, a simple uh, empirical method. For example, we can use the uh, consistometer, which, we, which uh, we can measure time. Uh, when we let the sample to flow, then we measure the time, then we can use a conversion factor to change that to a kinematic uh, viscosity. Or we can use a capillary uh, glass viscometer. So that is actually empir empirical measurement of viscosity where we, um, we cannot express the viscosity using a fundamental unit such as you know, a pascal second or centipoise. But we can use instruments such as a uh, viscometer here. In this case, this is a Brookfield uh, viscometer where we can measure the sample using a different uh, spindle. Uh, so we can measure the viscosity and express viscosity in centipoise or pascal second. Or we can use a viscometer, uh, sorry, a rheometer here. We can uh, actually use a rheometer to, uh, to determine the whole uh, flow curve. Uh, at different shear rate and shear stress and can uh, plot the flow curve uh, easily using a rheometer. So using this kind of instrument, we can actually choose to measure the viscosity at one constant shear rate or we can also choose to measure the viscosity over a range of shear rate. You know, for example, from 0 to 1000 or even 10,000 uh, reciprocal second. So the, so the question here is, is it always necessary every time you want to determine the whole flow curve which cover, let's say, you know, a shear rate from 0 to 100 or 1000 uh, reciprocal second or maybe you just fix to a constant shear rate then measure the viscosity at that particular shear rate. So what, what is it? Uh, should we always measure the flow curve or we can measure only the viscosity at constant shear rate? So we must remember that um, we can actually uh, face this kind of situation here. Let's say we have two liquid here or two samples, different material. So we have uh, A, so this one, uh, the hollow circle here is sample A and this one, the the red uh, circle here, this one is uh, B. Okay, so we have two sample and two flow curve. So we plot here, in this case, we plot the viscosity, Pascal second, on the Y axis here in the log scale. Then we also plot the shear rate, reciprocal second, the unit reciprocal second in SI unit, um, also in the log scale. So at a low shear rate, at a low shear rate, we can see that uh, in this case, um, this is only a hypothetical, but we, we can have actually this situation for some sample. So we can see here at a low shear rate, um, sample B has actually a higher viscosity than sample A. Then when we increase the shear rate, so at a medium shear rate, in this case, the opposite is actually true. Here we observe actually sample uh, A has a higher viscosity than sample B. And now when we increase the shear rate further, we can actually get the situation where the, the shear rate of sample B now is higher than sample A. So as I said, this uh, hypothetical um, situation but we can have this kind of situation for some samples so in this case if we only measure the shear rate the viscosity of the two sample 
only at, let, let's say at this shear rate here okay so let, let's say we uh, only measure at this shear rate so in this case we maybe we can make a conclusion that sample B sample B here which is the red color here has a higher viscosity than sample A so we report to the you know we, we, we make a report that sample B actually has a higher viscosity than sample A but in fact actually in this case this is only true at low shear rate but if we decide only to measure at this shear rate we will find actually maybe another lab or another person decide to measure only at this shear rate and the person will report actually sample A has a higher viscosity than sample B whereas another person here or another lab measure the viscosity and they report the opposite which in this case sample B um, is higher than sample A the viscosity and maybe let's say another person or another lab decide to measure the viscosity at this shear rate and he or she will report that actually sample uh, B has higher viscosity than sample A and maybe uh, you know you know it will agree with with uh, this uh, lab or this person because uh, this person also measure at different shear rate but it happens at low shear rate the viscosity of B is greater than sample A so in this case uh, if we only measure the viscosity at one shear rate the result can be the result can be uh, misleading or we can get actually a false result if we have this kind of situation so it's good actually in this case it's good to have a f the whole flow curve so that we can see actually how the viscosity change as a function of shear rate and another reason why we should have uh, you know uh, but in the we can have a, actually a situation where for a Newtonian fluid uh, for, for a Newtonian fluid actually the viscosity is constant at any shear rate so we, if we plot the viscosity against shear rate the viscosity is constant so for Newtonian fluids maybe you know uh, we just uh, measure the viscosity at any shear rate because we know that the viscosity is constant at any shear rate so we can choose to measure only one shear rate at any shear rate because the viscosity will remain constant at a constant temperature of course if we change the temperature then the viscosity also will change but for a non-Newtonian for example we have shear thinning uh, sorry for a non-Newtonian fluid for example pseudoplastic here a shear thinning so in this case uh, you know we it's good idea for this one not to measure the viscosity at one shear rate but to get the whole flow curve so that we can see how the viscosity changes as a function of shear rate so for a non-Newtonian uh, fluids it's not a good idea to measure at one shear rate it's a good idea to get a whole flow curve so that's actually the answer for the question just now um, for Newtonian fluids we can measure at one shear rate but for non-Newtonian actually it's better to measure the whole flow curve